Recently, there's been a huge push for smaller radars like one to fit in your car or help out on an assembly line. But employing traditional pulsed radars in these situations can have some pretty big downsides, and I'll cover some of those in this video. One solution for these specialized needs is FMCW radar. But what is an FMCW radar? FMCW is an initialism that can be broken into two components, frequency modulated and continuous wave. And there's a lot to dive into with that name. I think it makes most sense to start by taking a look at the continuous wave part, so let's start there. To understand why this technology is so cool, it's useful to compare it to a traditional pulsed radar, like the one probably used to get your daily weather forecast. A pulsed radar works by transmitting a short pulse, then turning off the transmitter and waiting for the target's reflection. We then measure the time from transmission to reception and use that to calculate the target's range. It then repeats this process of pulsing and waiting over and over again to obtain information about the target over time. On the other hand, a continuous wave, or CW signal, doesn't pulse, but remains on for the entire period, transmitting and receiving the whole time. And in this simple case, for illustration, we're just using a sine wave, but that'll change in a second. This may seem like a pretty small distinction, but it's actually very important, because it's where one of the main benefits of CW systems arise. See, a signal propagating through the air degrades heavily with distance traveled on the order of 1 over r squared, so the amount of power we transmit matters a lot. Unfortunately though, with a pulsed radar, we're only transmitting for a small fraction of the time, sometimes with a duty cycle of less than 10%, while the rest of the period is spent waiting for the signal's return. This means that if we stretch out the pulse's power over the whole period to get an average power, we get a much smaller number. So we really need to crank up the pulse's peak power to get our desired average power. Depending on the duty cycle and the desired average power, this can be a really large number. Since our CW system transmits over the whole period, like the plotted average power signal, which effectively has a duty cycle of 100%, we can transmit at significantly lower peak powers to achieve the same average power. And this really lends itself to small and low power environments like a car. Cool, so by changing from a pulsed to a continuous transmit signal, we fix the large peak power problem that plagues pulsed radar, but we don't quite have a working radar. I mean, we can't even detect the target's range, and that's a pretty critical part to radar. But why can't we just time the signal from transmission to reception like a pulse radar does? Well, let's go back to the actual signals we're sending and receiving with the CW radar to find out. Here we have the amplitude versus time, but what if we looked at it in terms of frequency versus time? Since we're just transmitting a sine wave at a single frequency, this is just a horizontal line for the CW system. Once we start transmitting our CW signal, we have to wait some time for it to return. If our target is moving towards us, the entire signal's frequency will be shifted up and down if the target is moving away. And I'll cover this in a video about measuring target velocity, but for now we'll make this simpler and assume the target is stationary. In this case, the received frequency spectrum will simply look like another horizontal line shifted in time, with the time shift being how long it takes to travel to and from the target. Really though, if we get rid of these nice colors for visualization, these two signals are indistinguishable from one another, so we can't really tell that time difference. So what if we modified our signal to make this shift visible and actually be able to measure that time difference? Well, that's where the other part of the FMCW name is derived, frequency modulation. Frequency modulation may sound complicated, but it really just means we're changing the signal's frequency over time. So instead of the constant frequency we used previously, we can use one of a ton of modulation types, like triangular modulation, which is great for determining a target's velocity, and I'll cover that in another video, or frequency shift keyring, which is commonly used in digital systems. But a common and simple type of frequency modulation these radars use is a sawtooth wave, which is one of a subset of techniques called linear frequency modulation, or LFM. Looking at this sawtooth plot, we have the frequency of our signal as a function of time, and I'll add some dummy units to illustrate the point. This ramp is also called a chirp, and how it's set has a large impact on our system. We can configure the chirp in a few different ways to have different performance metrics, like at what frequency we want to start ramping, how much frequency we want to cover, or in other words the bandwidth, which will have an impact on our range resolution, or the minimum range between targets that we can detect, and how long we want our ramp to be, which will affect the max velocity that we can detect. These are just some of the design decisions we have to make when designing an FMCW system, but there are quite a few more, so I'll cover that in a more comprehensive video. Now that our frequency isn't constant, we start to be able to see that once the wave returns to the antenna, there is a visible shift in time from our transmitted signal. This is really cool because it affords us some new information, 
At any given point in time now, we have two signals, one being transmit and one being received. So how do we derive range information from these two signals available to us? Well, we know the speed at which electromagnetic waves travel, so if we knew how long it traveled, or in other words, this time shift, we could determine the distance traveled by multiplying the two together. This would give us the entire round trip distance, so dividing by two would give us just the distance to the target that we're looking for. But now we need to solve for the time shift. Remember, we have these two frequencies, FTX and FRX. The difference between the two, shown in this highlighted section, would be the section of the bandwidth covered while the signal is propagating through the air. This frequency is really important, and you'll see it all the time when using FMCW radar, and it's called the beat frequency, so keep note of that. So if we wanted to convert that frequency difference, or beat frequency, to a time difference, we could find the slope of the sawtooth's chirp by dividing its bandwidth by its chirp time, and then we can take the section of the slope that we care about, or this beat frequency, and divide it by the slope to get the time shift. This time shift can then be plugged straight back into that range equation to get the target's range. And there you have it. That's the FMCW radar range equation. This right here is really the essence of FMCW radar, and it's cool that it really just breaks down into a few small and relatively simple equations. Now you should have a basic understanding of FMCW radar, but there's so much more beyond what this video covers, and the information here definitely has some caveats. I'm making videos about the velocity estimation and hardware implementation, which will be here once they're done, but my friend John Kraft from Analog Devices also has a great series on the hardware and software as well, which I'll link in the description. I'll continue to make RF and radar videos as well, so stick around to see those.